Insomnium is an underrated band. I feel that I don't get the same attention as many other uh, melodic death metal bands. They just released a new album called Anno uh, 1696, released on Century Media Records on February 24, 2023. The band is from Finland. It's their ninth album. The album is a concept album about the year 1696, a very dark time in history. There was a lot of famine, there was witch hunts, and it was taking place all across Europe. It was a, a dark time where there was like so much famine that there were even like instances of cannibalism and there was a pandemic and they did these witch hunts and they would take women and torture them and kill them and all of this is reflected in the album and it's just a very dark album. So sometimes a melodic death metal can be kind of upbeat and melodic and that's still there but it's... Um, very dark, and in this one they are incorporating more elements of black metal, doom metal, and folk metal. So the opening track sets the story up. It's called 1696. Opens with some acoustic strumming and some classical influences. So at first I'm thinking of, of a band like Opeth and their earlier albums like Morning Rise, where they mixed a lot of acoustics and the heavier stuff. The intro is very atmospheric. You hear some violins in the background. They have the spoken word vocals as if they're setting up the story about the year 1696. But when the song picks up, it just takes off and they incorporate the faster drums. And at this point, I hear kind of like a black metal sound coming in. They do the blast beats and the darker vocals it actually reminded me of uh, Amon Marth, But they still have that melodic element. And then they have some guitar riffs that remind me of classic heavy metal and it's just... Very complex, and that's just the first song. So the next few songs were the singles. So the first one is called White Christ. Another one with a slow building intro, and it has heavy guitar riffs. I think they were going for more of a doom metal feel with this one. It moves a lot slower, but the song is melodic. Uh, the vocals can get very brutal at times. And they also incorporate choir vocals in the background, and kind of gives it a very full sound. Another one that reminded me of Amana Marth. It has the type of sound with like the drum beat is slow, it's steady, and it takes lots of twists and turns. There's a slower breakdown with arpeggiated chords and spoken vocals. And I also have to mention that this one has a guest vocalist named Sakis Tolis, a Greek musician from the band Riding Christ. Then another single called God Forsaken. This one is a little different because they have a woman singing in this chanting fashion. And it's another great uh, guest vocalist, um, Joanna Krokela, a folk singer from Finland. It's very atmospheric. Uh, the guitars remind me of black metal, a lot of choir singing. The melodic elements are still present, but they use more acoustic guitars. So that's what I like about this album. They incorporate a lot of the acoustics and the heavier stuff. So, for example, this song has heavy palm muted guitar riffs, something that you don't really get with, with like this kind of band. A lot of times these types of bands play more like in the middle of the guitar, but they, they do some of that heavier stuff as well. And I like the song. It has lots of like that chanting, and it kind of keeps through that atmosphere of the album. Then another single called Lillian, it was one I knew before the album came out. I think this was the first uh, song I heard from the uh, album because they had a music video, and I've watched it a few times on YouTube. And I like this one because the same thing they have with many of the other songs, the soft acoustic intro, the melodic guitars, but then like these vocals are very like heavy and aggressive. I think this was a good example of a single. It was a little more accessible. It got very heavy with the vocals, and they did do some deep gutturals, and I think it's more of the, one of the more melodic songs in the album. Then uh, a song called Starless Paths. I found this one to be more like that atmospheric black metal mixed with uh, melodic death metal. It still has those same components as other songs I was talking about, the acoustic guitars, but this is one of those songs that embraces the progressive side of the band. They go back and forth between the heavy aggressive parts and the softer acoustic parts. The song is very complex. They have fast tremolo picking. They have choirs in the background and even have a piano at one point. 
It comes to one of the darkest songs in the album called uh, The Witch Hunter. Another one where they have the, uh, like they were saying before, the acoustic intro, the spoken vocals, you hear that a lot in this album. But then it just gets like very heavy. And this is one where they have male vocals, which is uh, doing like the clean singing, which is not something you hear a lot on this album. And it goes back and forth with the acoustic and clean vocals and then the heavier vocals and, and the guitar riffs come in. So this one's a little more technical. And the unrest is mostly an acoustic song. I would say they're going more for like atmospheric folk metal or atmospheric black metal type of sound. The vocals are softer, almost like a whispering style. And they have more violins and more clean vocals. So this is more of the, one of those more peaceful type of songs. I think the final song is actually my favorite, uh, called The Rapids. And I think I like this because it's like the most complex song in the album. It's one of those songs where they have like a heavy death metal style with blast beats at one point and lots of technical guitar riffs. They have chunky palm muted guitar riffs and slow haunting atmospheres. But my favorite part of the song and probably the reason why... I'm I like this song. It's they have this like haunting like organ like that like almost like that like deep purple type of sound, where it just makes the song very creepy and eerie, and it's a good album closer. Lots of melodic parts and it just kind of fades out with a clean guitar to end the album. So in conclusion, this band has definitely released a solid discography. I don't think they have any bad albums. I was able to listen to all of them before listening to this one, and they've always been consistent. I did feel that this album might be like their darkest, where they kind of took their sound to new levels. They were trying some new ideas, and that's good. I, I like when bands kind of do some new stuff. It's very dark and complex. The album just came out. I wasn't able to listen to it uh, a lot of times, but I think it's the kind of album that kind of like you, you need to give it some more time. But with that being said, I'm still going to give it 8.5 out of 10. It's, this is like one of the best albums of the month. Let me know in the comments what you think. Here's a playlist of 2023 new album reviews, and I'll see you in the next one.